Chapter thirty two of the Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter thirty two. Give diligence to enter into the rest. Hebrews chapter four, verse eleven. Let us therefore give diligence to enter into that rest, that no man fall after the same example of disobedience. Our epistle is intensely practical. How it detains and holds us fast in hope of persuading us not to be content with the knowledge or the admiration of its teaching, but personally to listen to the message it brings from God by the Holy Ghost, and indeed do the thing God would have us do, enter into his rest. Let us give diligence to enter into that rest. Let us give diligence. The word means make haste, be in earnest, put your whole heart into it, see that you do it, enter into the rest. Does no man fall after the same example of disobedience? The danger is imminent, the loss will be terrible. God has sworn in his wrath that unless we hearken and obey, we shall not enter his rest. Let us give diligence to enter in. All the wonderful teaching the epistle contains farther on, as to the holiest that is opened for us as the place where God wants to receive us into his rest and live, as to the great high priest who has opened the way and entered in and lives as our Joshua to bring us in, will profit us nothing, unless there be the earnest desire, the willing readiness, the firm resolve to enter in. It is this disposition alone that can fit a man spiritually to apprehend the heavenly mysteries the epistle opens up. And surely it ought not to be needful to press the motives that should urge us to obedience. Ought not the one motive to suffice, the unspeakable privilege God offers me in opening to me the entrance into his own rest. No words can express the inconceivable greatness of the gift. God speaks to me in his Son as one who was created in his image, capable of fellowship with himself, as one whom he has redeemed out of the awful captivity of sin and death, because he longs to have me living with him in his love as one for whom he has made it possible to live the outer life in the flesh with the inner life in Christ, lifted up, kept safe in the holiest of all, in God's own rest. Oh, can it be that any one believes this and does not respond? No, let each heart say, Blessed be God, into this rest would I enter, here would I dwell. We are so accustomed to the wilderness life of stumbling and sinning we have so learnt to take the words God speaks of that life, chapter 3, verse 10, they do always err in their heart, as descriptive of what must be daily Christian experience, that we hardly count it a practical possibility to enter into the rest. And even when the desire has been awakened, the path appears so dark and unknown. Let me, for the sake of such, once again gather up what has been said as to the way to enter in. It may be God of his great mercy may help some to take the step. The instructions need be very simple. First, settle it in your mind, believe with your whole heart that there is such a rest, and that today. It is God's rest in which he lives, into which Jesus, as your Joshua, has entered. It is your rest prepared for you, your land of promise, the spiritual state of life which is as surely yours as Jesus is, into which Jesus will bring you, and where he will keep you. It is the rest in which you can live every hour free from care and anxiety, free from weariness and wanderings, always resting in the rest that trusts God for all. Believe this. Then cease from your own works. Not as if you had to attain this perfectly before entering into God's rest. No, but consent, yield, be willing that all self-working should come to an end. Cease from self. Where there is life there is action. The self-life will seek to work, except you give up self into the death of Christ. With him you are buried, in him you live. As Christ said, hate your own life, lose it. Cease from your own works and bow in deep humility and helplessness of all good as nothing before God. Trust Jesus as your Joshua, who brings you in even now. Israel had simply to trust and obey and follow Joshua. Set your heart on him who has entered the heavens to appear before God for us. 
claim Jesus as yours, not only in his cross and death and resurrection, but above all in his heavenliness, in his possession of the rest of heaven. Claim him and leave him to do his blessed work. You need not understand all. Your feelings may not be what you would wish. Trust him who has done all for you in earth and heaven to do all in your heart too. And then be a follower of them who through faith and patience have inherited the promises. Israel passed in one day through Jordan into Canaan, but did not in one day come to the perfect rest. It is at the end of the life of Joshua we read, The Lord gave them rest round about. Enter today into the rest. Though all may not be bright at once, look to Jesus, your Joshua, and leave all in his hands. Come away out of self and live in him. Rest in God, whatever happen. Think of his rest and Jesus who has entered it in your name, and out of it fills you with its spirit, and fear not. Today, if you hear his voice, enter in. Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. It was through meekness and lowliness of heart that Jesus found his rest in God. He allowed God to be all, trusted God for all. The rest of God was his abode. He invites us to share his rest and tells us the secret. In the meekness and lowliness of Jesus is the way to the rest. Israel did not enter Canaan. And why? It is twice said because of disobedience and thrice because of unbelief. The two things always go together. Yield yourself in everything to obey. This will strengthen you to trust for everything he has promised to do. The rest includes victory. The Lord will give thee rest from all thy enemies round about, and thou shalt dwell in safety. And the Lord gave them rest round about, all their enemies gave he into their hand. End of chapter 32